Hey everybody, welcome back to Straight Up RC. This is Chris, and in this video, we're gonna talk about some basic servo information. Now what I mean by basic servo information is like the basic of basic information about a servo. There's already a lot of videos online right now that discuss exactly what a servo is, exactly what a servo does, and there's also videos from like flight test, uh, A-Main Hobbies that cover a lot of what a servo is in an RC car and how it works. So this video is not intended to reiterate that information, but what this video is intended to do is cover the topic of, or the question of well, what is an RC servo? And the reason being is because I've been in the situation where I've talked to somebody and they say my RC car will drive, uh, but it won't steer. And I've only had it for like a month. Right. And the basic of questions will follow, you know, things like, well, have you checked this? Have you checked the wiring? Have you checked the dual rate? But the first question that comes up in some cases, and this is very basic as I stated, but they state, well, what is an RC servo? What is my steering servo? Where is it? They don't even know. And that's completely understandable. That's fine. Let me guess you in fact. Know what you are told, which is nothing. Basically, all you need to remember or all you need to understand is the servo in a standard electric RC car steers the car. Whether it's a teeny tiny little servo mounted on a 24 scale or something mounted in an 18 scale, you know, the servo is mounted right here underneath the on and off switch. They're on basically every on road RC car, truck, monster truck, you name it. So, that's what you just need to remember and understand is the steering servo or the servo for your RC car steers the car. But servos are in a lot of things. They're in automobiles, they're in airplanes, they're in real world applications and they serve the same purpose as to physically move something with a command of some sort. And in an RC car, it's exactly that. All it does is it takes the input that you give the RC car from the wheel of the remote to steer the vehicle. And basically, servos are in a ton of things. They're in all kinds of stuff. They, Hypothetically speaking, they would be throughout Megatron and help him transform from a semi to a vicious looking transformer. It's the same concept. Servos are gonna come in a billion different sizes, shapes, colors, designs, and the basic of basic information that you need to know is, you just need to know that the servo steers your RC car. Once you know that, it really helps you figure out exactly what else could be going wrong because then we're going to get into things like a servo horn versus a servo arm, dual rate, wiring receiver if it's plugged in correctly there's a lot of things with like advanced RC remotes and RC cars where you have endpoint adjustments there is a one-off for that because servos are used in nitro model RC cars and in boats to do a lot of other things sometimes sometimes you have rudders sometimes you have the throttle servo which is the same principle of a servo but it's used for the throttle system instead, but it does the exact same thing. Like the Rampage V3 has the steering servo, but it also has the throttle servo. So you sometimes get a little confused when it comes to nitro or two-stroke models because they utilize the same servo sometimes for the steering as they do for the throttle. And that can get a little confusing. So, and they're gonna come in a lot of different sizes, a lot of different shapes. They're gonna be mounted in completely different locations on a lot of vehicles. Some vehicles might have a very small, short servo tucked up underneath where it steers the vehicle and it'll tilt side to side, it'll shift side to side. This one, like I, I showed, it, it just goes back and forth and it turns the steering system and it turns the front wheels. This little bitty one is mounted directly on the axle, and that's not uncommon. In fact, the Everest 10 from Red Cat Racing has got the exact same thing. It's, a, it's an axle-mounted servo that then steers your wheels. And that's basically 
the gist of it. It's it's the device that steers the vehicle's wheels. Some vehicles like this little bitty one have a servo on the front and the rear. And that is when you usually have four-way steer. You see that a lot in crawlers, monster trucks have it. And that application is simply to basically be able to steer the front and the rear independently. But there's still no difference. The servos are still gonna come in a lot of different colors and a lot of different shapes, even different wiring, you know. They're also gonna be larger scale servos for fifth scales. And as you've seen, there's gonna be the little tiny servos for the little 18 scales, 24 scale. They even have little or smaller servos. So there's a few little specifics that you just gotta keep in mind when it comes to servos. And just remember that it's, they're all about basically the same when it comes to scale. When it comes to uh, 10th scale and 8th scale and 6th scale cars, they almost all use the same style or size RC servo. Some are a little bit taller, some are a little bit smaller, whatever the case may be, but they roughly are around about the same size. The only time you're gonna run into major issues is when you come into the 5th scale size because they're gonna be incredibly larger. So. And of course, the small uh, 24 scales obviously aren't at all the same size as even the 10 scale. But this is three different brands of servos. And as you can see, they're almost identical in size and shape. You know, there's very, very, very little. There's maybe the tops are a little bit thicker on one versus the other. The gears are almost all the same. The, the mounting holes are almost identical. And the wiring is very very similar you just have different colorations and that in itself you can figure out later on down the road but these are all different brand servos and yet they're all the same size so a lot of times people are like man I want to know you know if I want to upgrade to this servo will it fit there's like a 95 to 99 percent chance yes it's gonna fit simply because of the fact that these are all relatively built to the same scale and same size now the one key factor that a lot of people, you know, don't understand after that is what is referred to as the servo horn or the servo arm. Sometimes it's called arm, sometimes it's called horn. Mostly it's called horn. And all that is, is the little device that is mounted onto the front of the servo. So this little piece right here that is mounted onto the front of the servo is your servo arm or horn. Uh, you, you say servo horn to anybody, they're almost always going to know what it is, unless they don't know yet. And well, now you know. But this little device right here is just the servo horn, and it's going to attach to the steering system, usually a link, just like on this Everest 10. It's going to attach from the servo, from the horn, to a link, and it's usually going to go to one side or the other, or both, depending. And it's going to be the first piece that is going to activate your steering. And there is a lot of different kinds of servo horns. Some are gonna be aluminum, some are gonna be plastic, some can be simply modified. For instance, these two servo horns are the exact same servo horn. The only difference is this little nub right here, I simply cut off. And that's just to use it in a different application. So that is the second bit of information that you need to know. Now. The third and kind of most important aspect of uh, picking a servo and a servo horn or, or understanding what they do and how they work together is knowing the tooth count on the servo gear. Um, roughly right now there's around about only three different tooth counts that I'm fully aware of. There might be more, I don't know, but the majority of servos out there right now have either 23, 24, or 25 tooth and that is the count of the gear that goes on the front of the, or the output gear of the servo. This gear has a very specific number. And when you're going to get a servo horn upgrade or a, you know, just a change, you're gonna switch this out, you have to match the tooth count of this piece to the tooth count that your servo is. So that's the, the, the kind of the third thing that you need to understand or need to learn about your servo because now that you know what a servo is, you know what this is, you know what this piece is called, and, you, and you're like, okay, now I want to get rid of this plastic piece, and I want to upgrade to aluminum one. Well, if you get the wrong one, this isn't going to fit. So you need to know exactly what tooth count is on your servo, 
and what is on your servo horn. That way you don't mess up and end up spending money on something you can't even use. And like I said, the Nitro models are a little bit different and they're gonna have a horn just the same, but what you're gonna end up seeing is you're gonna end up seeing the, the linkages. These, these linkages are gonna appear on the horn or the link end that is connected to the servo that is connected to your throttle system. And it might be, you know, throttle and brake, it might be only throttle uh, from one side to the other, and it may have a piece that is shaped similar to this that then connects your servo to your throttle system and to your braking system. So you may have to, you know, kind of manipulate these when it comes down to other tuning aspects of nitro and two stroke models, but these are all just part of the throttle system and connected to the servo that controls your throttle system. So that is a little bit of a learning curve and that's one thing that is a little bit uh, more advanced about nitro models is not only do you have to learn what the steering servo is and how it works and how to center it and how to you know get an upgraded horn for it or whatever but now you got a whole nother servo that you have to worry about not only a horn for that throttle servo but then you got to worry about all the links too for all this you know for the throttle for the, uh, the the gas on the carburetor and for the braking system so that gets a little bit more advanced when it comes to nitro models the basic thing you just need to remember is servos steer your rc car so to give a little bit more of an advanced demonstration of what a servo is and what its potential is, we're going to use my custom Gen 8 here that I've been building for a long time. And this in itself is a completely custom build uh, that I'll do a much more detailed build review on. But I just want to demonstrate quickly what exactly servos have the potential to do. So. Now you're going to notice right away this does not look like a normal RC car and that's exactly right. It has the basic principle of an RC car, motor, transmission, drivetrain. If you can't tell, I've removed the center drive shaft to the front, but it's got a lot of servos. It has five servos and the servos are intended to do what is referred to as servo lift suspension. So not only does the servo in the front steer the car, but these other servos lift and lower the right height. And I'll show you what I mean. So you have your basic steering, just like any other RC car. But this receiver and remote system allow me to articulate these servos and I have them set up as front and rear currently but theoretically speaking, I can operate all these servos by themselves. And even though they're not connected to a steering system, they still basically do the exact same thing that they would do if they were connected to a steering system. So if I want the servos to move, I just hook them up the way I have them hooked up and you can see that they're very strangely hooked up in these really weird, unique little uh, elbows here that I have to allow me to articulate the suspension. But this is what it does. It allows me to lift and lower the sections of the car like you would see on a servo lift suspension system. And that's all that it is. Now, if I was to take and reprogram this remote to the servos, I could articulate them individually and start moving them one at a time and do a complete hydraulic system. It'd be really cool. And I've had this set up like that before. But this is basically just a simple demonstration of the, uh, the basic principle of using a servo, which is just a device that provides movement of some sort and it's usually in a rotational manner or, you know, in this manner, it could be lateral where the steering just needs to steer side to side. But it allows me or anybody that wants to deal with a servo to do all kinds of crazy stuff. And all it takes is understanding what the servo is and how to make it work.
As always, if you haven't done so already, feel free to like this video and subscribe for more Straight Up RC content. And keep an eye out for the thorough review of my custom low Gen 8 RC truck. Thanks for watching.